Hi there Virgo, thank you for joining me for your year 2016 forecast. At the start of each year I give a solar return for each sign. Last year there was a big clash between the Sun and its combination with Pluto and the planet Uranus which is all to do with restlessness and rebelliousness and more positively to do with freedom and independence. But trying to meld your desire and affections with someone in a more committed way may not always have been an easy pattern for you, not just in the last year, but perhaps over the last three or four years too, because Uranus and Pluto have continually been quarrelling. Now they're going to be in conflict at the, f at the start of this year, the first three months, but then this really difficult aspect, which has been a lot to do with global uncertainty, is at last going to come to an end. We can all breathe a sigh of relief, but there is another big testing aspect to come later in the year to replace it. That's the way things go. But for you, as this year begins, there is a really nice link between the Sun and Saturn. Saturn is now full-time in the sign of Sagittarius. Well, full-time for the next couple of years. Of course, it was in this location last year, but for you, then reverse back into your sector of everyday communications. But now it's in the area that's very much to do with home, family, emotions. And this is an area that you're going to learn a great deal about yourself over the next 24 months or so. But this year, because Saturn's forging a very constructive link with the Sun, it suggests that this can be to use an often phrased term, quite a journey, but quite a positive journey. It can be creative. So, for example, if you're wanting to get spliced or you're wanting to have children or renovate a home or get up your first foot on the property ladder or rent a, a, an accommodation which really is much more appropriate for the person you can feel comfortable being in, well, this can be a year of progress. Now as this year begins, Venus, the planet of love and affection, is also in Sagittarius, suggesting that the more you can nurture your relationships through sensitivity and the ability to listen to other people's needs can be a real plus, and that can be a platform that you can grow this year from. Mercury, your ruler, is for just about one day in a very bubbly part of your scope as well, but then switches early in January into a much more pragmatic area. But that's no problem for you. That's all about grappling with the details of things. But Jupiter, the planet of optimism and hope, which has been in your sign since last August, is going to continue with you right through to the 8th of September this new year. So this is your opportunity to demonstrate with what makes you an individual, what makes you different, to initiate things. And the more you can show faith and self-assurance in what you're trying to do, the more that Jupiter will reward you. What we can't do with Jupiter is take things for granted. And it does rewind from the 8th of January to the 8th of May. And that could be a period where some of the things you want to achieve seem to tread water a little bit and don't go forwards in quite the dynamic way you may hope. Now, the first eclipse of this new year occurs in March. And that's a particularly significant month. It occurs on the 9th, but on the 6th, Mars makes its way into Sagittarius, the same location as uh, Saturn, and of course, Venus started the year. Now, Mars, in this part of your horoscope, the fourth solar house, uh, is going to be in this area for an extended period in 2016, for five long months. This is exceptionally unusual. It's elliptic means that it usually takes six weeks to work through each zodiac sign, but it's going to go through a retrograde, which begins in the middle of April. Now, it is going to start to go forwards again, and by August and September, it's going to be going back into this sector of home, family, and emotions. But that points towards the potential for some frustration this year if things don't go quite to plan. Saturn, of course, in its in its natural guise, can create frustration. But when Mars and Saturn get together, as they do in August of this year, there may be one issue that really tests you to the limit. But you're going to have to try to tackle this as best you can. And the solar eclipse, which occurs on the 9th 
of March is particularly uh, important because it's emphasizing your ability to communicate your ideas to other people in a way which they're going to be supportive of what you're trying to achieve. So in other words, what you say needs to also be of interest to them and have some benefit to them. If it's purely you trying to get something from other people, well, it's going to be a lopsided arrangement. So it's about give and take. But the lunar eclipse, which occurs on the 23rd, is actually in your sector of emotions. So the more that you can, I beg your pardon, in your sector of resources, so the more you're aware of the value of yourself and the value of what you're saying, the better relationships can flow this year. However, the big influence that I told you or hinted about earlier is going to be the square that's going to occur between Neptune and Saturn. It begins at the end of May and goes on to October. It uh, was a backdrop in November and December last year, peaking right at the end of November. It's an extremely difficult aspect. If you think about it, Saturn, for all its bad press about being restrictive and difficult, it's actually about structure. And for you, the structure around your emotional and home life is set to change possibly and almost almost probably over this next two years. So this square with Neptune suggests that when it comes to close relationships around your emotional foundations, there can be some kind of distortion in your thinking or what you're told by someone you get involved with. Now this can occur across this section of time, end of May through to October. You really need to be conscious of this. What you're told may not be particularly accurate, what you think may not be particularly accurate. So you could find yourself at times trying to forge relationships or links which actually are not going to be good for you, not going to be feeding your soul. That might not be what you're trying to achieve. You may feel that there's a great opportunity to get to know someone, perhaps you really fancy them, but whether they'd be good for you or not, in this more elemental, emotional way. That could be the lesson of this year. Now we get round to September and it's a key month, especially for you because on the first day there's a solar eclipse in your sign. This is a great opportunity to supercharge your efforts. Uh, Jupiter, however, is going to be moving out of your sign on the 9th and into Libra. But for you, this can be fantastic because it can lead to an improvement in your financial situation in the last quarter of this year, provided you really work hard and you've worked hard with Jupiter going through your sign in the year preceding this switch. There's also a, a lunar eclipse which occurs on the 16th. This goes back into Pisces, emphasizing again the need for relationships to be sweet, for you to really prosper in terms of your emotional happiness. So although there could be an improvement in your financial situation, relationships and that, that basic area of your life, which is to do with what you base everything on, so to do with what uh, feeds you physically and emotionally is going to be the key along with those relationships for the whole of 2016. And as the month comes and the year comes to a close at the end of December, there is once more another potentially distorted influence between Mars and Neptune. So if you meet someone very late in 2016, keep your wits about you just as much as if you meet someone earlier in the year. But it can be a time, a year where you learn an enormous amount about what you really need to feel secure and happy within yourself. And that's probably the most important thing for any human being. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you for joining me. Good luck and goodbye for now.